Welcome, this is the last part of our four-part series on ArcGIS 10 Interface Basics. First thing I want to get into, Insert Menu, which is right up here. One of the things we have used this for in the past is uh, the capabilities to insert a data frame. And if I insert a new data frame, I get a blank screen because the new data frame becomes active down here. And you notice how this one up here is just uh, normal text, and this is bold. That's an active data frame identification and I can add data to that so if I come over here to counties and drag it over there and then I'll see my counties you can only see one data frame at a time in your data view area over here let's go back to our other data frame and you can go back and forth by right clicking on the data frame and then hitting activate and there's a shortcut of holding the alt key down when you click on the data frame name so let's zoom into this area a little bit and I'm going to show you the advantages of having these different data frames. And remember, you can rename these things. So if I change this name to Study Area, and I change this name down here to New York State, I'll show you in a minute one of the advantages of having multiple data frames and what you can do with them. All right, so let's get back to what we were looking at, which is our Insert Menu. So our Insert Menu allowed us to do a new data frame. There's some other options on here, but I'm going to show those in the layout view. Now, if you recall, the layout view, we could get to over here in the view menu. And there's an option called data, which is what we're currently seeing, showing our data set. And we can only see one at a time, one data view. But layout view, if we select that, we click over to here and we see our map page as identified by this solid line out on the outside. We have an inner line, which is the um, print limits and then we have our data frame if I click on it you'll see one data frame if I click right in the middle you'll see the other highlighted and I'm just going to drag this off so that you can see it more clearly we have a data frame here this is the New York State data frame and notice over here on the left it's in bold if I click on this data frame in my layout over here over here it becomes the active data frame in my table of contents so again, one data frame is active at any one time. What's the advantage of having more than one data frame in here? Let me just pull this data frame down, and, and let's say we wanted to do uh, something like an inset to show where our study area is in the uh, state of New York. We can reduce the data frame size. We can embed it, say, maybe over here on the left. Um, I want to see the whole data frame, so I can actually click here and it will zoom to the hole. And I can embed this in here as a uh, as an inset. If I right click over here on the data frame itself, I can go down to properties all the way to the bottom and I can set my uh, frame information. And I can put a border on my data frame and I can put a background. So if I just pick something like a white background and say OK, then over here it's blocked out in white. I could also have done that if I move this up a little bit, under the Properties option here. Either way, same kind of op options are available to me. And this allows me to put the inset somewhere in here, cut it into the map, that type of thing. And then the other thing we might want to have is where does this area fall in New York State? And that's there's another option to, to get to that. And if we right-click on uh, this data layer, and we go down all the way to the bottom, there's a Properties option. And in there, we can click on something called Extent Indicators. And we only have one other data frame, so it's showing it here. We click on it and say, Show the Extent. And we can change the color, and we can change the outline, and so forth. But for now, we're going to take the default and just say OK. And you can see that it has shown this extent of this data frame inside this data frame. So you could actually have a, a locational map of New York State with five, six, seven, eight, ten study areas all identified in their separate data frame extents. What else do we have out here in our insert menu? We have, certainly we have legends, north arrows and things like that, and those are going to relate to whatever data frame we have currently selected down here. So if I was to add a scale bar at this stage, it would be a scale bar based on the scale of this extent. And I'm not going to go into all of these, I just want to show you two pieces here. 
one of which is picture. So if you click on picture, you can insert a picture in your layout. I'll use one without any lettering. I say OK. And here's my logo. And I can place it anywhere I want to on the map, resize it, and so forth. So you can you can put pictures in of field information, field work, uh, ground shots, people, whatever you like. And one of the other, last thing I want to show under the insert menu today is the dynamic text. And this is a really nice addition. You can insert text which is dynamic in that it could grab the current date. So if you want to date your map, you just click this. And we can pull this down. It drops it in the middle. And if we put it right down the corner. And let me just grab this zoom tool to zoom in that section of the map. So that you can see that we have a current date shown there. And this would be updated when you open the map up again and look at the date which you automatically updated. Hence the dynamic text. And we have other things in there. We have username, which is going to pull it right from the from the map document. Uh, author, all of this information is coming from the map document. Um, we can input the coordinate system. And this would be the coordinate system for the currently active data frame. Zoom out a little bit here. And grab that dynamic text and pull it over here. And this is this is what we get. And of course, like everything, it's an element that you can select and you can edit it. So if I just double click on it, like that, I can see this is the text that's that's causing the drawing and it's grabbing uh, variables. And I can say I don't maybe I don't need the false easings, uh, all of this specific information down here. I might just want to keep my units uh, in here and throw everything else away. And you, yeah, it takes a little bit of getting used to as to where this is, but you can pull these out and start tossing information that you don't think you need. Like this. Let's then hit apply. Let's see what you get. So there, I was able to cut out what I didn't think was all that necessary. And I've grabbed the coordinate system, the projection, the datum, and the units. And you can obviously resize this, change the text and whatever, and put it in. And there's other things. So of course if if you reproject your data to something else, you change it, this is going to be dynamically updated. The other thing too that you can add in here is a service layer credits. If you're using a background data set, let me pull up that, that you derived from um, pulled off of ArcGIS online, it will imprint a service the service layer credit in there. By default, it's going to put it right into the image. If you don't want it there for whatever reason, you want to highlight it someplace else. If you use insert up here again to the menu and say dynamic text and use the service layer credits option, it will take it out of there, out of that image, and create a new element that you can put in your layout, separate from the, the actual base map image. And this identifies all the uh, data sources that were used to make the base map. And you should include this in your, your layout. And, and they know whether you've used that or not, because if I was to remove that, they automatically put the service layer information back in. So those are just some of those things that you can get to under the Insert menu. And again, while we could go to the View menu up here to get to our data view. Let's go to the uh, little buttons down here, icons, to switch back. And so <clears throat> I'm going to go all the way back out to my full New York State extent. And what I want to do is uh, let's remove this data frame, New York State. We're not going to need that anymore. So let's just hit remove button. What I want to do is show you just uh, some couple items under the geoprocessing menu up here. Uh, we're just going to look at, at uh, buffer and clip. These are two that uh, the most, probably the most used of all the uh, geoprocessing capabilities. Let's pull in uh, a data set. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, pull in the Ontario County data set and drop it in here right where I want it and turn it on. And what we have is we have Ontario County. Let me pull it down a little bit. Identified here 
is part of the state. Let's zoom in to that area. Okay, so we have a I-90 corridor, and, and for let's have the premise that we want to select all the townships within perhaps a 10-kilometer area on each side of the corridor uh, because we're doing some sort of a, uh, an upgrade of the facility, and we may want to see what the impact's going to be on and which townships we have to identify and hold public hearings in and so forth. An easy way of doing uh, of buffering that, we might create a buffer first and then identify all the townships within there. And we can do that using the geoprocessing tool. We can go to geoprocessing and say buffer. We get this uh, buffering dialog. And we can add in the input features. We can use the drop down list and say grab I 90. And it automatically gives us an I 90 output buffer here. And we can identify a linear distance. So let's just say it's 10 kilometers. Put 10 here and we change our units for this drop down list to kilometers. And there's other things in here having to do with how, we, how you um, buffer it on both sides of the feature, rounding the buffer ends, and, and dissolving. And dissolving basically allows us to dissolve all the buffers. Because keep in mind, these, this corridor, although it looks like one solid feature, could actually be multiple sections of an, and multiple arcs. And when we buffer tool runs, it's going to handle each one of those independently. And what we want to do is, down here, we select all. And it will essentially remove all the overlapping buffers so that we only have one solid one at the end. So we say, OK, let that go and do its uh, buffer thing. Let's kill the dialog, close, and let's see what we have. There's the buffer, there's the roads. If we turn off this one and turn on this one, we have our new buffer right there. Let's zoom into that a little bit so you can see what the impact is. There. And now you can use that buffer to, say, clip the townships if you wanted to, to just select the townships. You can use it to clip other data sets like soil data and uh, facilities data and uh, uh, watershed information, all that type of thing. You can now use this new polygon, which is the I-90 buffer, which is right here. Okay, let's close some of these things down, and we'll flip back to what another thing I want to show you. One of the other features in, in um, the ArcGIS 10, along with this, uh, this, the tools toolbar, uh, is something called go to XY. And sometimes if you were, have a specific location and you're not sure where it is on your map, yes, if you move around the map here, as you can see, I'm, I'm moving left to right, down in the lower right corner of my map, I can be displaying my units, my map coordinate system units in meters in this case. They could also be being displayed in uh, decimal degrees and, and, and other uh, units, feet, and so forth. The tools toolbar has an option that says go to. If you click on that, it will actually take you to a point on the map. It will put a point on the, on the map for you. I can make sure my units are in decimal degrees. Excuse me. Minus 75.0 75 and 42.5. OK, so I can put in decimal degrees. It's showing this up here. This is what it is. And then I can hit my button to say um, flash. And it will show me where that location is on my map. Uh, I can also zoom to it. And then flash location. And there it is. I can also put a point there, and I can label a point in there with the ID. The other thing I want to mention is that we have a context menu associated with this data view. If you right-click anywhere in the data view, you'll get a context menu that will allow you some shortcuts to going to for navigating, go back extents and forward extents, rather than coming all the way up here and hitting these, these buttons, you have this context menu right here. It helps you do a lot of these things, including select features. If you decide to select features, you can do so here and look at the data frame properties. So that context menu is there. Remember the idea. If you're not sure what to do, right-click. There might be a context menu waiting there for you, and there certainly is in the data view.